Greetings viewers. We have a pen today with a somewhat unconventional design. This is the Jinhao model 995 and as it should be obvious, it looks like a swan. So um, let's take a, a look at this uh, pen, shall we? This is a light plastic, inexpensive uh, $2 pen. Um, it uh, weighs 11 grams, so very, very light um, uh, uh, plastic pen. Uh, it's got the Jinhao lo um, logo with the chariot embossed on the side. This detail on the clip, eyes and nose, etc., to make it look like a swan with the bent swan neck. It's quite attractive, and it's a functional, functional clip. Um, a couple of unusual things: the middle part of the pen has sort of this hourglass shape, which is kind of interesting. Um, it does form a little bit of a grip when you hold it. It's an unscrew to cap pen. It takes over two turns to unscrew it. And then that becomes sort of the hourglass shape becomes sort of the, the grip uh, section area. So um, that uh, does make it a little interesting. One other interesting fact is the threads are on the very, very end uh, of the section here. So when you dunk this into an ink bottle to fill it, you're gonna get ink in these threads that ha you're gonna have to clean off, which is a little bit annoying, but there you go. The pen comes in two different nib variations. It comes in a uh, conventionally shaped um, um, unhooded fine nib and an extra fine nib which is hooded. We will try them both and see how they both they both um, they both write. It also comes in a variety of colors. Um, uh, it comes in a few more other than these. So we have here a gray, black, a clear, a clear translucent green, a, um, a opaque green. Comes in a few other colors. One color doesn't come in is white, which I thought was kind of interesting because to me white and black would have been the two most obvious colors for a swan shaped um, pen. A couple other colors available besides this. And each, uh, you know, in the, in the gray case, you have a gray um, translucent plastic in the section. Um, in the black case, you have they, they sort of do a pretty nice job of like contrast needs. You sort of have a smoke color on the on the black, clear on the clear, the translucent um, green on the translucent green, and a sort of um, fluorescent translucent green on this uh, fluorescent green pen. So they do a pretty nice job of matching all the plastics up and um, and uh, and uh, stuff like that. So that's that's. Um, that's uh, interesting right uh, right then and there. Um, so, uh, not a lot to say about this pen. I haven't tried it, but I suspect you might actually be able to eyedrop with this pen. It is a cartridge converter pen. It does come with a converter, a standard Jinhao converter. Um, I'm not seeing any particular reason why um, uh, this this seems to be solid inside. There's no metal, there's all plastic parts. The only thing I'd say here is that the threads, the threads here, and on the end here are quite coarse and you'd want a finer thread to eyedrop. But if you put silicone grease there and perhaps an O-ring, you might um, you might be able to eyedrop it. Like I said, I haven't tried. I'm not quite sure it's worth the trouble um, for this type of pen. This pen actually has a decent amount of length to it. As you can see, it's a bit longer than either a Lamy Safari or a Pilot Metropolitan. But as I said, it's a very, very light pen, only weighing 11 grams. The pen does post. It posts pretty nicely and solidly. And again, you don't have to certainly don't have to worry anything about the weight. Um, and like I said about this grip section, it, it has these sort of um, um, cutouts for gripping. So this is a very similar to sort of like a Lame Safari style triangular um, a section. So it's basically going to kind of enforce a particular type of grip and a particular spot to hold the pen. So be warned if that's not your thing, you may not like this pen but all in all it's a cool little pen um it posts it's got a clip unlike say the shark pen which um jinhao also makes which uh, does not have a clip so this this actually is great i really like the way they integrated the um swan uh bill into the clip looks really 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 cool hey pelican how about you do a pelican bill um a limited edition pen with a full-blown pelican head kind of like this but you know make it like a pelican head, um, a clip cap on one of your pens, do some sort of cool limited edition thing. You'll sell a lot of those, I bet. 
But I bet you're wondering, how does this pen write? We're gonna find that out right now. Okay, folks, what we're writing he with here is a Jinhao uh, number 995, and this has an extra fine steel hooded nib. Um, this writes well. This is um, very much like a 292. It's pretty much the same. If, you, so if you've written with a Jinhao 292, then you pretty much know the deal. It's a very fine indeed, but it is smooth and um, has a pretty good flow, etc. So um, I'm liking the way this writes. Again, for the price, you really can't beat it. So that's the extra fine hooded nib. Let's try the fine um, a sort of conventional unhooded nib. So we'll do it right side by side. So this is a Jinhao number 995. And this is a fine steel nib. And this is a bit broader. So you clearly see, you see the, the sort of the level of, there's the line width notwithstanding, the level of saturation in the ink that you're getting out of it is, is definitely more, because there's definitely more ink getting laid down here as well. But this is, this is pretty smooth. And um, it's uh, decently wet, I'd say it's average wetness. And um, pretty nice. Pretty nice. So I think you'd, um, I don't think you can go wrong either way with, um, with, uh, with this pen, um, both either the extra fine or the fine nib. They're both, uh, both pretty nice. So um, the f fine is only marginally broader than the um, extra fine, but it, you know, it definitely is, you're definitely laying more ink down um, with the fine and the extra fine. Okay, this ink is diamine. Aurora Borealis. Um, and this ink has an interesting history. So this is basically a um, sort of very emerald green color. Um, and the way that this ink came about is for the last two years on the um, social media site Reddit, so that's R-E-D-D-I-T dot com, if you're not familiar with Reddit, it's a social media platform, and there are a bunch of what they call subreddits, or special interest groups, if you will, and there's one specific to fountain pens, and every real year for the last two years, they have done a, uh, a survey, a vote, if you will, to come up with a color that Reddit um, community wants Diamond to manufacture specifically for them, and then anybody can go buy it. And they do a poll in a, uh, amongst the readers. And um, last year, a caller named Earl Gray won, which I will do a subsequent video on. And this year, the winner was this color, Aurora Borealis. And if you notice on the side of the bottle, it even says, this ink color was chosen by the members of r slash fountain pens, a wonderful Reddit community of fountain pen enthusiasts. If you aren't part of the community, you can join in. And it has, I'll just hold that there if you want to go to that website right there. Um, that will take you to exactly where you need to go to, to become part of the community. And I highly, highly recommend it. Now, in terms of this color, this is a very, very nice sort of emerald green color, as I said. Um, Um, but one thing that people have described this color it's over and over again is for years people have been very fond of a J. Herbon color called Emerald of Chavor, which is a emerald green with a pretty significant amount of sparkle in it. A lot of people really love the color but don't want the sparkle. So I've read online about people going through all these elaborate procedures to filter out the sparkles, etc. Um, what people have been saying is that this Aurora Borealis is the closest thing out there to Emerald of Chavor without the sparkles. So let's find out if that's true. So I have this identical pen here. So I have another 
um, Jinhao 995 inked up with Emerald of Shavor, and this has Aurora Borealis, so let's do a little side-by-side -side comparison. So first up is the uh, Diamine Aurora Borealis. And um, let's just do a little patch or so there. And we'll do some scribble scrabble there. All right. And now let's take a look at the Emerald of Shavor. So this ink here is uh, J. Herban Emerald of Shavor. Um, you know, part of the problem is that it looks like this nib, for whatever reason, although it's supposedly the same nib, is quite a bit broader. Um, so let's see if we could just maybe, if we just concentrate on the ink patches, um, let's do two patches really side by really side by side to see what we can get here. So this one would be the Aurora Borealis. And right next to it, we will put, oh, you know what I'll do right below it. We will put the Emerald of Chivor. And it is very close. It is very, very close. It's not obviously not exact, but it's quite close. I, I, I would, you know, I would be tending to agree that if you like Emerald Chavor and you like the green color, that sort of deep saturated emerald green, and you don't like the sparkles, this would be a very, very good alternative. Perhaps the closest alternative uh, out there. Um, I don't know of anything else that's quite exactly this color, but um, I'd be interested if anybody knows a, a close well term. I think it certainly beats going through all the trouble of filtering the sparkles out of the Emerald of Shavor. So, you know, duh. Yeah, I, uh, to me, that's not an exercise worth doing. Plus, Emerald Chavor is a very, very expensive ink, and this one is, is actually quite moderately priced. Um, so you do have that, uh, that issue as well. Um, that being said, this is uh, this uh, Aurora Borealis is quite a nice ink. I like it. And uh, like I said, you know, if you like that emerald, deep emerald green color, uh, this is definitely a, a good, uh, a good, a good, uh, a good choice. I think that'll just about do it for this video. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please, please consider subscribing. Leave a comment. Give us those thumbs up. And as always, until next time, have a great day. Bye-bye.